When you start out wanting to fly FPV, a lot of people want to become an aerial cinematographer. A lot of people dream of getting those aerial smooth shots that were only possible with a helicopter just a few decades ago. And a lot of camera professionals are not really interested in going down the rabbit hole and becoming an RC enthusiast. They just want to learn how to fly, purchase a craft, get it up in the air. When camera people are wanting to know, should I get a craft that can carry a full-size GoPro or Insta360R and fly it in a variety of cinematic scenarios? Should this be one more tool in your tool bag? This is a professional tool. It's not just a fun toy for RC enthusiasts, and it actually can be both. I think a lot of FPV people are going to select this as their craft of choice for getting cinematic shots. Because once you do know how to fly FPV as a hobby, you want those too. So this is truly an intersection of two different markets. The RC hobbyist enthusiasts that want to get the most cinematic close proximity footage that wants to follow their buddy riding on a motorbike, that wants to follow somebody on a skateboard, and the camera professional that wants the best possible piece of gear. John here guys, and today we're talking about the Shindrones Squirt V2. This is the latest revision with all of the Drone Co parts on here. It has the thin ducts on here that act more like guards, reducing the amount of prop wash. This is a professional Cinewoop craft. This is a professional piece of gear. Now I've long postulated though that this formula was a little bit too overly complex, especially when the Cinesplore came out by FPV Cycle. But Troy over at Quant Standard Labs sent me over one. When you buy one from Quant Standard Labs, it comes with this personalized sign note that has a QR code that has instructions on how to set it up once you get it. So um, if you do wanna have one of these done for you, that is a really good option to start with. Now, the craft itself, I think I'm gonna make a separate video about the experience of getting something set up for you in a professional manner. But let's talk about the craft itself, the Squirt V2. Now, let's go over the build. Talon gigawatt stack. This uses Brother Hobby 1507 3100kV motors. That is a motor that you can run on 6S. So this three inch with the ducts, uh, you can put a full size 6S battery because the top plate is just wide enough and you have enough room up front for a full size GoPro. I ran this sucker on the GoPro Hero 9. As it is with these six blade props, with the strap, with everything, with the full size DJI Air Unit on board coming in at 318 grams on this craft and I really kind of postulated that once the Cinespore came out once the FPV cycle motors came out the 2203 with massive amounts of power that really allowed me to go very fast and have a lot of control more than I was used to on these little small cine whoops that made me think that there wasn't really any reason for this particular formula I really didn't think that success was needed. And boy was I wrong, guys. Boy was I wrong. It does happen on occasion. It really made me rethink how I think about motors and how a platform like this that is meant to carry weight differs from a racing or freestyle um, setup that is meant purely to go fast. Now, when you start to think about the difference in motor size of 1507 versus 2203, Right away, you know that one is far, far wider and one is much, much taller. Now, normally, under normal circumstances, wider means low in power. Low in power is what you want to have, right? When you're carrying around a payload. That's what all of the automotive things have taught us over the years. You know, when you're shopping for a truck, you want something that's gonna have that low end payload towing capacity power. But it's not quite the same thing when we're talking about flying crafts. 
And the reason for that is, guys, when you think about where you're actually going to be flying in that power curve, yes, this is going to have more top end power, but because of all the additional weight, because of the weight of that full size battery, because of the weight of that full size GoPro, because of the 320 grams of this dry, you're actually going to be up in the throttle range. You know, just to get off the ground, you're talking about 30 percent throttle to get it a fast clip you're talking 60 70 percent throttle leaving you 30 percent to really give you a nice punch so you do have some room left to play with but if you take a look at the power curve you know that a wide motor is going to have more power down low a tall motor is going to have more power up high but when you're going slow on these things, you're still not going to be down in the 10, 20, 30% power band range where a wide motor would have the biggest advantage. That advantage starts to go away because you spend so much of your time flying these center hoops with the extra weight in the 50 to 70% range, you are taking advantage of that extra tall stator size. Uh, and so that really blew my mind. This combination is so controllable. Uh, I had confidence flying through my house in ways that I have never felt confidence before flying a full-size GoPro. This is the iFlight C85 that I just reviewed. It is a two inch that is capable of carrying an Insta360 Go and I flew that comfortably in my house. I had almost the same amount of comfort flying this thing which is almost three times as heavy with a GoPro Hero 9. Now side by side, that Hero 9 footage is gonna be so much better. I'm not planning on taking any jobs. I'm not planning on selling any footage anytime soon. But for those that are professionals in this industry, you're gonna want a professional tool. And that means that you're gonna wanna have the most professional camera, which is the Hero 7, 8, 9 series. This is the only way that I could carry it indoors. Even the Cinesplore with the added power, the added control, I wouldn't feel as comfortable flying it indoors. Why? Because it has a little bit too much power. And so you start to accumulate these pieces of gear and their tools just like all of the video production tools around me. I have a DJI Ronin gimbal sitting right over there. I have a microphone a few inches away from my face. I have a tripod that my camera's sitting on. I have lights and umbrellas and soft boxes all around this whole room. And those are all tools that are part of my kit. So if I was at assembling a fully integrated kit, a fully comprehensive video production kit, I might have something like this, and then I might have something with the bigger motors. If I was doing a scene where I had to actually move a little bit faster, I might be more prone to picking that Cinesplore with the 2203 size motors, but if I had to go inside, if I needed the best all around, this thing performs so incredibly well. And look at all of the beautiful touches that Quad Standard Labs puts on this. The Drone Co style camera mount that has the modular camera system right here in the middle, that really makes it flexible for you to be able to put any type of mounting in there. It has a protector on the DJI camera so that you don't ever have to worry about bumping it. They have the newest style thin ducts the increase in performance that these ducts provide you by not blocking all of the airflow at the bottom is tremendous so much more control you might lose a tad bit of thrust but not having to worry about those washouts i actually was able to you know put this thing to the test flying on some tracks flying around and it just really surprised me. The other nice thing is I don't need a full set of extra batteries to fly this thing. On my Cinesplore, I did 4S because I did the very high KV version. So I was typically using like a 1050 milliamp 4S pack, not the normal packs I fly on. I can use the same packs that I race on and freestyle on here. Uh, the latest flight I did, I actually got a pretty good flight time. I believe I got three and a half, four and a half minutes, and I was using a Tattoo 1400 V4, the same exact pack I was racing with that day when I took this on the race course. So the versatility that you get is second to none. If you saw Nurk on Mark Rober's video where he did the robotic field place kicker, 
He got the drone shots for that and he was flying an almost identical craft to this one, a 6S Squirt V2. So when somebody is being hired to go on the highest caliber of gigs, when they're in an environment that is not big enough to fly a giant craft that can carry a red camera, then the next best choice is gonna be something that can carry the best quality GoPro camera around, and this is it. What do you think in the comments, guys? Are you getting cinematic footage with this? I'm gonna be doing a Cinewoop shootout very soon. I'm gonna be comparing this to the Protec 35, to the Cinespore, to this C85, and I'm trying to finish up a build of a Race Whoop open source design as well to figure out which one is king, uh, or is it gonna be more like a camera point of view, camera professional point of view, where just like you would have a variety of lenses in your bag, you may have a variety of Cinewoops for different cinematic scenarios. Thanks guys.